What is the problem with hijab? This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim. So, Muhammad Hijab has been on the warpath recently. I wasn't going to bother making a video on this drama, but he kept escalating. He posted pictures of my wife and me on Twitter with some vulgar comments below. And he did the same to Abdullah Gondal and his wife. So, where did this all start? Things haven't been going well for Hijab. It feels like he's beating himself up for creating a crisis that doesn't seem to be going away. He's upset, frustrated, and unstable. He really needs to take a chill pill and calm down. So what happened? How did we get here? Dr. Yasser Qadi had hinted many times in several different talks and interviews that he was exposed to ideas from academia that caused him doubt that he wasn't able to resolve. These issues have not gone away with time and they exist in the primary texts and also by Muslim scholars as well. In 2016, there was a private email list known as Knowledge Retreat for scholarly individuals who had studied Islam at a university level to discuss issues and problems in Islamic theology with more nuance than the general public would be familiar with. In August of that year, in this listserv, Qadi had gone into more detail as to the nature of the issues that were bothering him. Fareed, of Farid response took this private email and sent it to Dawaman's teacher who gave it to Dawaman who published a YouTube video saying Yasir Khadi is misguided and corrupt for saying all these things. Typical Dawaman style. The list maintainer Ismail Adam didn't know who leaked the email and kicked out 90 individuals from the list trying to figure out who did it until Farid admitted it. His entire email thread with Farid was posted on his Facebook. Link is included below. In the chain of destroying the Quran, the first ones to blame are the Muslim scholars who documented the issues with the Quran, scholars like Abu Dawood who wrote Kitab al-Masahif. Then there are the so-called Orientalists, the scholars who work tirelessly to find out the real story of Islam, the murder mystery as one of my friends said, the academics, not with the bias of proving a certain theology, but for the sake of the truth to piece together and find out what really happened. Then we have Yasir Qadi, who found himself in this dilemma, spent his whole life diving into Islam, memorizing the Quran and learning it, only to find out that there are huge holes in the story. Now what does he do? Then we have Farid, who, being the self-righteous defender of the Ummah, decided that Yasir Qadi was dangerous and needed to be exposed for thinking the Quran wasn't preserved. Then we have Dawa Man, another self-righteous idiot who amplified Farid and publicly condemned Yasir Qadi. Instead of privately dealing with these issues, these Muslims caused it to spread more and more. Yasir Qadi couldn't do a thing. This was all out of his control. Now fast forward four years, these leaked emails are still causing controversy and doubt. To the point where Muhammad Hijab, who had some rapport with Dr. Qadi, decided to bring these up in a safe dialogue on his platform. Lo and behold, this was his biggest mistake and ended up being his and Qadi's undoing. He asked Dr. Yasir Qadi about the preservation issue, saying that this was the most popular question that people had for him. On this point, I just wanted to go to another thing, which is probably the most, when I put on the community page, the most asked thing, which is there was a video that was released by one of our brothers um, some time ago, uh, Brother Imran, and he re released this big, big video about the leaks of some kind of email chat that you were involved in about preservation of Quran. Okay. Yasser tried to hold him off and told him not to push the issue. What would you write? Uh, 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 let's you not, let, let's, you, you're pushing me. And I'm saying it's not hikmah to listen. I but Hijab kept ramming through it with questions, insisting they had to discuss it. After the interview, the backlash was severe. Hijab even threw Yasir Qadi under the bus saying, we will refute him if he goes against the Quran. And he deleted, he took down the last 30 minutes of their conversation. He didn't even bother doing a clean edit. He just cut out the whole ending of it. It just ends in the middle of a conversation. He didn't even put the intro back, or anything like that. He just hastily removed it. All of it, but it wasn't enough. It was too little, too late. Muslims were having doubts. Many were leaving Islam. And then Yasir Qadi went on the offensive. He wrote an angry post on Facebook saying the Quran was actually preserved. 
He filed a copyright claim that failed against David Wood's response video and maybe others. Then he ultimately took down the entire video from his channel now. Unfortunately for him, after already receiving over 100,000 views or more, this has gone viral like nothing else. I myself have received a comment on my blog yesterday from a Muslim who said, currently I'm grappling with what Yasir Qadi said about Quran preservation. There was even a portrait someone drew in London in chalk representing what Dr. Qadi said. If anything ever went viral, it's this. All Farid, Hijab, and Qadi do is speed up the decline of the Quran. It was already there in academia. It just wasn't known to the masses. And they did it all on their own. Without any help from any ex-Muslims, the Muslims themselves made the problems with the Quran super obvious for everyone to see. And the bumbling damage control just made it worse. Now we get to the dark parts. Hijab recently told the Pasi Prophet to commit suicide, which is definitely harassment. What was his justification? He ended up uploading a clip justifying what he said. He said, oh, you guys don't think there's anything wrong with suicide. So what's the problem? Likewise, I said to Apus recently, I said to him, look, if I were you, a coward like yourself, I'd rather die from the cowardliness that I have, the pain of a coward, a coward than continue or something to this effect. Uh, so go and go and jump off a building, go and kill yourself, because it shouldn't be morally objectionable on your worldview. I'm, I'm paraphrasing what I said, uh, not word for word. So there was uproar from his people. He's like, how can you say this? How can you wish death upon? What's wrong with wishing death? And what what is wrong with asking someone to uh, kill themselves on your worldview? What is wrong? This is his logic. I personally don't think there's anything wrong with suicide in some cases. But it's not black and white. I don't think people should commit suicide. I think we should help them to see the value in life. I think they should be given help if they are sad and angry and depressed. If they, however, ultimately do not want to live, it's their choice as long as they have control of their mind and an understanding what they're saying. I'm not against euthanasia with conditions. In no way whatsoever do I think it's okay to tell people to kill themselves. Just like I wouldn't go around telling Muslims to marry a six-year-old. That would be stupid. Then in a recent video that Hijab uploaded, he was screaming and ranting things like, you are an imbecile and weakling if you have doubts. Orientalist slave. Orientalists are all my students. No Christian shall dare challenge Islam. I am angry and shaking. Be scared of me. Doubts are embarrassing. You have doubts because you Muslims watch too much Netflix and don't read Islamic books. Too many emails about mass people leaving Islam. Imbecilic slaves. Be a man. Don't you dare come up to me and go use a toilet. Some Muslims can have doubts about it. I don't get it. But then you have Muslims say, I have got doubts. I don't know. And this can't be quiet. Have some guts. Be a man. Stop being uh, the slave of the Orientalists. Come on. It's an inferiority complex. Why are you, man? Brother, I have doubts. What doubts, man? What embarrassment is that? Why you have doubts? Why? So tell me now. I don't understand. Why you have doubts? What kind of man are you anyway? What kind of woman are you? What kind of Muslim are you? What kind of Muslim are you? Let's be honest about the situation. Putting doubts in that one's heart and that one's mind and this one's soul. Quiet man! David, would you have not read a damn thing? All you're reading is what I'm, all you're getting information from is me. I'm your teacher, boy. And all of you people, I'm your teacher to Orientalists. Well, I hear we are your teachers. And you know it. Don't pretend to be our teacher, you have nothing on us. You have no you know nothing. Don't ever, don't ever come and step up to us for life. All of you, and thanks for listening to me, I'm shaking. You need to use the toilet now, I know you do. Now listen, listen carefully. Listen carefully, and I want you to all listen. I know the enemies of Islam are listening to me. Let me tell you, my guy, you, you, if you saw what I look like now, believe me, a lot of the enemies of Islam would be, would be very scared. Just like Aipus was very scared. Many of them would be very scared, because you know when we come with the truth and the haq, when we come with the truth and the haq and, the, and, and all of the details like this, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And a lot of you are losing faith and you shouldn't. Aqsumu billahi al-azim. I know the Christians are on this chat. Lose faith. I tell you, lose faith. It's better for you. Aqsum billahi. You are deceived and self-deluded. Dunning-Kruger affect you jokers, you imbeciles. How dare we talk about the Quran, you imbecilic individuals. 
Sahaba were going to beat each other up because they didn't know. Is this one saying it? That, get the hell out of here! Get the hell out of here! And these Muslim, weak Muslims in the, in the West, sending me emails and this, I'm losing my faith and I'm a half and I'm losing, get the hell out. You are never a strong believer in the first place, you weakling. You're a weakling because you don't know your tradition. You're sitting there watching Netflix and you don't read the books of Islam. That's why you are where you are. That's why you are where you are, you imbecile. You can see he's not well from this clip. He doesn't seem okay. He's very upset and incredibly unstable. He really needs to stop right now and take a break. Step away from this whole thing because he's going way too far. After Abdullah Gondal posted this clip of him saying these things with a link to the full lecture, he went crazy and he has started posting pictures of me, posting pictures of my wife, as well as Gondal and his wife with some vulgar, sexually explicit captions. I'm not going to repeat what he said here, but it's BDSM related. Hijab seems to know a lot about this stuff. He seems to be so well acquainted in these matters. Seems like he's quite a naughty boy. I had to Google the stuff myself. The most embarrassing thing here is that hijab is giving Muslims and non-Muslims knowledge of sexual kinks. <laughs> a Muslim preacher mentioning golden showers, caging, and like, I don't know what. Like, Hijab posted the pictures with, do we have permission from them to disparage the loved ones? And then he said, what in that phraseology indicates that I want to insult your wife? I don't care to do so, but you are a moral hypocrite. You should give us permission to disparage your loved ones if you value freedom. He's saying, I'm not going to insult your wife. He's posting pictures of them, but he's basically dog whistling to others to go ahead and abuse our loved ones. Hijab isn't getting it. Mocking public figures, especially ones who have passed away, does not give you the right to retaliate and mock and attack and publicly abuse people's children or wives. These are living people. This may be harassment. There's no law against mocking dead people. There is. We call that blasphemy law. It doesn't exist in the UK hijab, but what you are doing may actually be against the law. This might be cyberbullying. I'm no expert, but you are definitely crossing some lines now. I don't consider myself a public figure, but in some ways I am, and I get my share of taunts, insult, memes made against me, abuse, and mockery. I wouldn't say I like it, but I'm used to it. I can live with it. I have a tough skin. So go ahead. Waste your time on doing that if you want. I don't care. But I tell you do something more useful with your life. But when you involve another person here, who in this case is Sandra and Cheryl, what sense is there? You're attacking living people by posting their pictures with sleazy comments. These two women did not consent to you using their pictures for your petty attacks. They did not agree to be used by you to promote your disgusting worldview. They have nothing to do with this. Hijab, you are a disgusting person for doing this. But this is a twisted sense of morality you have. If you go against the Prophet, you become fair game. But even worse, others who did nothing are used in this manner. People who are simply related to me and have no part in my activism are legitimate targets. Leave these women out of it. All you are showing is what a dangerous person you and your ideology are. This is really bad PR for you and your religion, hijab. You should apologize to these women for using them like this. Pick on someone your own size, you big dolt. For those of you who want to support me, consider joining my Patreon. And we will see you on the next two Abdullah's live stream. This is your friendly neighborhood ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.